Hello everyone, it's Alex and I'm here with another statue review. What else is it going to be? Um, big hello to you guys on Collection Neo and an even bigger hello to any new guys who are watching me on Statue Forum. Um, as explained in the last video, um, all my stuff is now on the Statue Forum channel and there's more details about my channel and Statue Forum in the description. Today's review, we're looking at a bit of a stunner here, guys. This is Sideshow's premium format. This is Thor, Breaker of Brimstone. This is a 1-4 scale. Mostly sculpt, apart from that big red cape. Um, premium format. The Sideshow like to label them. Right off the bat, I'm going to say this is a brilliant, brilliant piece of work by Sideshow. Um, we're going to get into some details, but first a little bit of origin story because you know I like to tell my stories. Um, so this, as you can probably tell, is very much a modern interpretation of Thor. Now for me, the actual true modern interpretation is from the J. Michael Straczynski run. And that's where I really, really got fell in love with Thor. Um, all that run running up to um, Siege and Fear Itself, all that stuff was great, and that's where I really um, grew to love Thor. Um, but this modern costume takes elements of that, but it's actually based around this costume from the book Thor, God of Thunder. This is the first volume. Now, the first 12 issues were written, um, and um, the art was done by this team. And then the team changed, as most has happened in most comics. I think the, the run total was 24 issues. Um, but it's really the first 12 issues that stand out. Um, if you're not familiar with the book, I'd definitely recommend um, picking it up. Even if you pick up the first 12 issues. I'm a real stickler for, you know, people having some reference or some, you know some knowledge about the statues they're buying. It really baffles me when you're paying six, seven hundred dollars for a statue and you've got no idea who the character is or where the costume's from. I'm I'm really, really adamant about things like that. Um, just to show you a bit of the this has got fantastic artwork all the way through this book. Um, but as you can see it's like a a spin on the um, Straczynski Thor costume. Um, it's a really, really, really nice modern costume in my opinion. This is the exclusive version, and this is the exclusive piece, which is um, Stormbreaker, which is Beta Ray Bill's hammer. It's limited to 1500, so there's plenty of these around guys if you want to pick him up. And then um, the cost was $685. And then the regular version, which doesn't come with Stormbreaker, it just comes with the normal hand, which I'll show in a minute. That's limited to two and a half thousand and was six hundred and seventy dollars. So it's only fifteen bucks extra for the Stormbreaker. I'd totally recommend it if you if you know I, I really like the double hammer look. But I understand that <clears throat> excuse me, um I understand that if you know shipping costs and import fees are going to be a lot for you then it might not be worth getting the exclusive just for that hammer when you could probably get it local for a lot cheap cheaper and to be honest i don't think it really needs the hammer i like the hammer i like the hammer a lot i think um, it's kind of unique for a thor statue to have both hammers um and it you know it definitely looks pretty fucking cool with the, the pair Let's see him do a quick switch out for you, just to show you what it like, what it's like the rag, and then we'll get some close ups. Now the the last premium format sideshow did was actually the modern take based on the J. Michael Straczynski run, um, and I really like that statue. I think I reviewed it on my channel. Go and check it out. Um, I really liked it. Um, a lot of people had um, a problem with where the the hands were, mainly the front hand. But for me, it was it was really well done. Um, the only problem I really had with it was the uh, the face. Um, it was well done and reflected the artwork, but it was just too calm. 
there was no it really really was swimming out for an open mouthed um, portrait but luckily we've got that here so we're going to zoom in onto the base guys get close up on the statue so this guy's riddled with amazing details and fantastic paint so here we are at the base and as you can see it's um it's Surti and he's not having a good day by the looks of it it's Surti's head who's a great fire demon from um, Muspelheim I haven't read Thor for a while but I'm pretty sure that's the realm it's really really nicely done now I'm quite a stickler for water and lava effects to be done in clear resin I always think they look better but to be honest this looks pretty good and um, the paints are really well done lots of um, this, the, the, the head of Seater has got like, this um, volcanic rock look so there's lots of oranges and reds and yellows running through it and then what I really do like is that some of the parts like on the teeth and up the um, bridge of the horn where it's been worn a bit it's got more of a sheen to it as you can see around these bottom teeth and then these spirts of lava or fire coming out of his mouth and around the base it's a really really cool base it's what I look for in a base if you don't know me I love a bit of a di diorama base it's all about that base um, I, I know people say well you know, the base takes away from the actual figure you know a plain black base is great not really I think um, a diorama base like this tells much much more of a story and with Thor I don't think it gets much better than him leaping from a fire demon's head I really don't you know, and we're never going to get a Seata statue, let's face it. It's definitely not on quarter scale. I think Boeing did a minibust of him, which was very cool. Um, but we're never going to get a statue of Seata. So why not um, have him on the base? So let's move up slightly and we'll start doing some details on Thor. So moving up to the legs of Thor. Now this same um, particular Thor hasn't got the army. Um, scaled male running down his le um, arms but he has got it on his legs and then the belts we've just got like a few runic belts running around and um, if we come around to the back got the nice leather boots with the straps it's all really well textured really well picked out and then the actual trousers underneath the blue pants pants I'm not American why am I saying pants the blue pants <laughs> underneath are really well textured they look like a, you know a good cotton weave. <laughs> I don't think I think I'm making that up, but you know it looks like um, quite hardy material for battle. And then of course we've got the huge sculpted cape, which has got wires running through the bottom. Um, the colour is actually a lot darker than it's coming out on camera. I don't know if that'll look any different once we upload, but um, it's really nicely done. It's got a um, slightly different texture on the outside and a different colour. It's more velvety on the outside and more silky on the inside, which is just how I like it. <laughs> um, like I say, the, the wire in there is really, really um, easy to manipulate and it connects to the body really, really well. And then moving up. The pose is just perfect. Hammer up about above the head. Um, the cape attaches with the two um, buttons here, which are both um, got little magnets in. They're both individually keyed. It's a really sturdy connection. It feels really good. Um, as you can see, fantastic texture on the chest here. I'm running down the side, slightly different texture. The arms and the musculature and the veins. And I really like what they've done with the paint here. I've seen a few people complaining about the paint. But I really like the dark purples, the dark tones. It really accentuates the musculature. And obviously, you know, it's going to look a little different here under hard light than it will when you've got it lit up at home. The head is a separate piece. And um, the hair at the back, the, the helmet, I think, is a great design. The two metal wings, a lot cooler looking than the old, you know, feathery wings, in my opinion. As you can see, just loaded with texture on the skin. Really good skin tones as well on this guy. And that face is great. Now I know um, Sideshow have been criticised recently for um, not doing great teeth. 
We're going to go a little freehand here, guys. I think they've done the teeth really, really well on this. The whole face actually is picked out really, really well. And try and get under him just so you can see more of that face. In fact, what I will do is take a few parts off here so we can get close ups. Even more close up, I should say. But as you can see, great musculature all round. Sideshow of just. I mean, sideshow, this is the problem with sideshow. It's so um, hit or miss. You get a piece like this, which is just like knockout, then you'll get another piece that's just so fucking average. Um, but as soon as I saw the unboxing on Sacho's um, YouTube channel, I was like, I've got to order this. You know, of me slowly dipping back into Marvel and DC. I'm just going to reset the camera, guys, and then I'll pull a few pieces off so we can have a close look at the head sculpt, Mjolnir, and Stormbreaker. So we'll start off with the head sculpt. Look at the mouth. Tongue, a little bit of gloss on there for a bit of saliva, the texture on the face. The eyes are done really, really well. It's just a tour de force, this piece. It really is. The hair does what it needs to do. If every sideshow piece came out like this, wow. Everyone, you know, Sideshow has its critics, but man, when they do a piece like this, even the gloss in the eyes, which I love. So I'm going to put the head piece back, because I don't really want to put it down, and then we'll move on to the hammers. So here's Mjolnir, and of course we do have the inscription. Really clean, really well done. Texture on the hands is brilliant. Connection's really solid, all the magnets feel good. And then the regular hand. Now regarding the paint, I think the blushness and the redness and the purpleness to it is, I mean, it doesn't make that much sense because he's battling the fire god. But you know, that's how you, I always think of Vikings, you know, having very pale, very pale skin and when the cold hits them, you get like that almost bruising lick. That's what I think they were going for, which I really approve. And here's Stormbreaker, classic Stormbreaker, very simple, but amazing texture on Thor's hand nails are really well picked out straps it aren't um, mixed media they're actually polystone very thin but everything's packaged really really well it's just a real tour de force this entire piece one last pause guys I'm going to pull out and then I'll give my final thoughts so there we go guys, probably the best Thor piece I've owned. Um, I've owned the other two Sideshow pieces and the XM piece. The XM piece is not good. <laughs> um, the original Sideshow PF is a bit of a legend, but I think it's long in the tooth now. Very pyjama jam, as a lot of old mixed media statues are. And the last modern Thor I thought was great. Great take on that Straczynski look, but um, unfortunately it needed a bit more bit more aggression in the face sculpt and I think this combines all three it's this costume's quite classic looking well modern uh, mixed media is good and the cape really nice exclusive 15 bucks more for the hammer it's totally worth it um, I think it's a great great piece um, Daniel Bell who sculpted this is doing some amazing stuff for um, Sideshow he also sculpted their most recent Daredevil I think he did Magneto as well um, really really good stuff I'm really looking forward to more from him and Sideshow 
um, and if Sartre can keep nailing production like this, we're not going to have any problems. We really aren't. Um, I think it's an absolute cracking piece. Um, dimensions, it's about 26, 27 inches tall. Um, about 14 inches wide, 14 inches deep. Maybe a bit deeper, actually, about 16, 17. You'll fit it in a best no problem. Obviously, you'd have to adjust the shelf for the height. Um, it might even go in the detail. Maybe not with the beat, maybe not with Stormbreaker on, but I imagine with the normal hand it probably would. But yeah, stunning piece, guys. I'm really, really happy. No qualms about this piece. I don't give ratings, and I wouldn't give it any piece of ten. But I think this is um, pretty close, to be honest. I really do. I really do. I've got no, no issues of this. Paints all look good. I mean, the only issue I've really got is if it was me, I would have had clear resin for the lava effect in the base and maybe a light up, flashing light up would have been cool. But you know, at this price point, that pose, that pose just sells it. Look at that. Yeah, and that, yeah, the whole sculpt's just phenomenal. Fucking well done, Sideshow, that's what I can say. Um, so yeah, guys, that's about it. Like I say, if you like what I'm doing here on Statue Forum, jump over to my channel, which will be linked in the description. If you like what I'm doing here, Collection Neo, and you want to see more on Statue Forum and lots of reviews and other bits and pieces from other people, um, I'm going to have a lot of cool stuff over there. Jump into the description and jump over to the Statue Forum channel. And um, yeah, next review, guys, will probably be something big and a little bit fishy. But tentacly, you know, tentacles. Everyone likes a tentacle. And that'll be the next review. <laughs> it is a Marvel piece. <laughs> Don't worry, it's nothing weird. Uh, but yeah, I can't recommend Thor enough, guys. So that's the um, Sideshow Thor Breaker of Rimstone premium format from Sideshow Collectibles. Stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. That's all I can say. So yeah, guys, I'll see you next review. Bye.